Hey family, what's it going? This is your girl, and the Bronze Goddess, and I asked you guys a million years ago on Instagram if you wanted me to do a Q&A video, and quite a few of you said yes, and you posed your questions. I'm going to answer some of those questions for you today. I appreciate the questions that you guys did ask me. I've seen these videos before where they ask if you were an animal, show us how you would growl, if you were a fruit, what kind of fruit would you be like? Really? Mm -mm. Nonsensical questions, but you guys asked me very thorough, detailed, and involved questions. Uh, so uh, it may take me a little bit longer. They're not like one word answers. So I'm telling you that ahead of time because there's no way I could possibly get to all of these questions in one video. So if you would like me to follow up and do more questions, then you'll have to thumbs up to let me know. If I get a thousand thumbs up, then I will do a sequel to this video. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I have all the questions screenshot on my phone so I can get through them. First question is from, well, maybe I'm not saying who this is from because y'all be having these weird names. Uh, being a stay at home mom is challenging. Do you have any tips and tricks to simplify your life? Uh, I definitely believe in multitasking. That is my main number one thing. If you watch my typical day routine video that I will link below, you'll see that I do a lot at one time. I love multitasking. It makes my heart smile when I have the washing machine going, the dryer going, the dishwasher's going, I'm folding clothes while listening to an audiobook while my chicken is marinating for dinner tonight. Sounds crazy, but I like having a lot going on at one time. It, it annoys me when I'm only doing one thing because I feel like the best way for me to make my household run smoother is if I have a lot going on. And so for me, my biggest tip for staying at home or working from home like I do, and that is to multitask, okay? Another thing I wanted to say really quickly, if you are a vlogger and you work from home or you're a stay at home vlogger, I'd like to make sure that when I do film, that I film more than one video. Uh, to me, it is a huge, not a waste of time, but it's not being as productive as I know I can be when I come in here and I only film one video. And so when I, I always have an idea of types of videos that I would want to film. Like right now, I could film a, I wanted to do a five minute makeup challenge. I also want to do a love with food unboxing with my daughters, or I want to do a no makeup makeup look or whatever. I always have in my mind ideas of videos that I would like to do, and I always have things semi set up. I have stuff over here that I have ready for a haul video whenever I have time to shoot that haul or I have an outfit idea that I have planned for an outfit of the day. For me, when I film, I like to film at least two videos in one sitting. That's making the most of my time. That's what I mean by multitasking. Now, whether I have time to edit those videos in the same day or not, it doesn't matter as long as they're filmed. And when I upload my videos, I do them on a schedule. There's there's public, there's private, there's unlisted, and there's scheduled. I typically have my videos on a schedule so they can go live when I'm asleep. And that way when I wake up and when I have time, if there's already comments, I can go ahead and answer those comments. So that's what I mean by multitasking. I like to like to stay ahead of the crowd. All right, so the next question that I see on here, how do you get over major disappointment? Uh, one of the ways that I get over major disappointment is that I regroup and I get me a new goal. I heard this line by Jay-Z before. It says, nothing wrong with my aim, just had to change my target. Uh, if, I, if I have a huge disappointment in one area, I go to another area of my life. One of the books that really changed my life is called The Aladdin Factor. It's by uh, Jack Canfield. He's one of the authors of the book The Secret. And The Aladdin Factor basically talks about how, how it's important for you to ask for what you want. If, for example, like when I did my retreat, I wanted to have lots of sponsored goodies. So if you guys watched my video and you saw the, the goodie bag, I had tons of sponsors. But for all the sponsors that you saw, there were a ton more that didn't want to work with me, that didn't send me anything. But you don't see that part because it doesn't matter how many people say no as long as some people say yes. So if I have to ask 10 people if they wouldn't mind being a sponsor for my event and only four of them say yes, what does it matter? What does it matter about the other six? Sometimes we're so afraid that somebody's gonna say no that we never even ask. I have, I'm telling you that, that book right there is one of the books that changed my life. I don't care if somebody says no to me. I'm not worried about, I don't have a publisher for my book. I'll find another way. I will self-publish my book. I'm not gonna sit around and wait on somebody to come to me and say, you know what, you should do a retreat and we're gonna sponsor it. I'll do my own retreat. I'll do my own couples retreat. I'll do my own anything. I'll ask for what I want. I, I, I'm going to tell you guys this. How I live my life, the way my life is set up these days, is I'm going to ask for you to help if, that's, you know, if I want to do that. But if somebody doesn't give me an opportunity, I'm going to take the opportunity. If they don't open the door for me, I'm going to kick it down. 
I'm not waiting on some genie, some fairy godmother to come in and give me everything that I want in my life. If that means I have to work at it, and I'm not talking about, you know, light work, like we always say, hashtag light work. If I'm talking about dirt under your fingernails work. I want what I want so badly that I'm willing to roll up my sleeves and get in there and do it. So it doesn't matter to me. And I want to say that really quickly to encourage you guys. Um, if you really want something and, and it's not happening for you, that doesn't mean you should just give up. Maybe you should try harder. Maybe you should try another way. There's more than one way to do any and everything. So if, you're, if you don't get a publisher for your book, consider self-publishing. If you don't get offered an audition, maybe you can get your own play. Maybe you can get with a, a screenwriter and other actresses and a wardrobe person and you can talk to a theater and see if you can put on your own play. Everything is not always going to be dropped into your lap. Sometimes you're going to have to do some real dirt under your fingernails work to get to what you want. I don't want to preach. <laughs> okay, so the next question is, you seem to have a lot of clothes. How do you get rid of your old wardrobe to make room for new stuff? Uh, I do give a lot away. Uh, you guys don't know this, but I give away an obscene amount of clothes. Co companies contact me all the time wanting to give me clothes and bags and shoes and things like that. And I went to this place one time, you know, one of those places that buys your new and used clothing. And they offered me, and I mean, it was such an insult how much they tried to offer me. I took everything that I had, I took it back out there, and I got in the car and I was praying, and I was like, God, they're not offering me anything for my clothes. And he said, I didn't tell you to sell it. I told you to give it away. I don't want you to make a dime. You're not doing it to make money. You're doing it because I want you to do it. I feel like with everything in my life, the reason why I'm blessed is because I do stuff like that. I never see a homeless person and don't give them money. I never, when I'm at the cash register and I say, you want to donate a dollar to the muscular dystrophy? You want to donate a dollar to, I always say yes. And I feel like that is the reason why I am blessed. The more you bless people, the more God gives you to give. So I, I, try, I sell my clothes every now and then, but for the most part, I give it away to people who need it more than I do. Like the battered women's shelter that I like to work with here in Atlanta called the Hope House. That's one of the places that I like to give to. Uh, would you say that any of your births slash pregnancies of your children were tough? Thinking about having children, I'm sure if I'm tough enough to give birth. First pregnancy was probably the most difficult, but they, they all had a level of difficulty. I'll just be honest with you guys. Um, for Yana, I was in labor for 45 hours. Uh, they told me that they would call it at 48. So they, I guess they had mercy on me and let me go in earlier than that. So um, it's been difficult, but I feel like for me, with having three kids, the instant that they put the baby on your chest, you forget all pain. I think that's even a scripture in the Bible, but the minute they give me the baby, I don't care what I had to go through to get there. Stretch marks, gaining weight, whatever, painful recovery, whatever, the baby makes it worth it. You can't really tell somebody who's never had children that, but yesterday was Mother's Day, so I can tell you with all certainty, you'll get over it as soon as you see the baby. You'll, it will be worth it. Every single bit of it, <laughs> drop my phone, every single bit of it will be worth it when you see the baby. You won't even worry about that. So the next question is, what advice would you give to someone in a relationship that is trying to better themselves and the other is not? Now the thing about that is you can't make someone want better for themselves than they want for themselves. Uh, that person has to want that for, for them. Uh, you can pray about it and ask God to uh, kind of increase their level of ambition and ask God to, to work with them and all of that. But honestly, I feel like in a situation like this, there's a chance that you could possibly outgrow your mate, at least in this area. Uh, when you're growing old with someone, you either grow it together or you grow apart. And I already feel like there is a bit of a division because if it's really important to you that you want a certain type of life and he's not willing to, you know, rise to that level of your standard, it will eventually possibly be a problem. Uh, you have to really think about it for yourself. I can't give you the answer to that. You have to think about it for yourself. Are you okay with his level? With his level of prosperity? With his level of success? With his lack of ambition? You know, I talk about it in my book when you talk about deal breakers and flaws. Is it a deal breaker for you or a flaw for you that he is not as ambitious as you are? Only you know. I talked about it also before that you have a relationship pie. And in that relationship pie, there's certain slices of it. You know, you could say romance is a 50% slice of the pie and this is a 25% slice of the pie. It depends on you how big a slice of your relationship pie is ambition for you. I can't answer that question for you. Uh, only you can answer that because you'll know that at some point you could possibly outgrow him if you want something that he can't give you. Anyway.